Hey, it's Steve from Objects Unlimited here to talk a bit about 3D scanning. 3D scanning is really a way to acquire geometry, and we use it when it's very difficult to measure things, especially on curves. Measuring a box or a square, relatively straightforward. There's lots of good tools like calipers and micrometers, those type of things. But measuring a curve, measuring a complex shape, is very difficult. That's what 3D scanning is for. We have a very wide variety of customers that use 3D scanning. Initially, when we first got into this business, the number one application for us was archaeology and being able to capture dig sites and fossils uh, for recreation and analysis. We moved quite a lot into doing artistic scanning and uh, people models, but over, over the last several years, uh, scanning has become much more applicable uh, in the engineering world for, uh, for us specifically reverse engineering and taking a part that is either worn or unknown and being able to extract those key dimensions so that it can be recreated. Uh, it really helps support our prototyping business in that we can uh, do the scan, the design, and the print and help reverse engineer parts from scratch. So some of my favorite applications from 3D scanning over the years, scanning dinosaur bones or fossils is always extremely exciting. Some of the medical applications are very interesting. For example, uh, prosthetic ears. If you lose an ear, God forbid, or you have a deformity in one of your ear, what used to happen is somebody would carve a new ear out of wax. You would make a mold, you would cast it, you would implant it. What we do today is we scan the good ear and then we mirror it. A simple one button click once you have good geometry and you're left with, with the model of an ear that is almost exactly correct. We then 3D print, make a mold, cast in a while, compatible material and implant. It can cut out a tremendous amount of time. Uh, I've scanned uh, vehicles for wide body kits, for uh, attachments, for uh, measurement. Uh, we've scanned a wide variety of industrial parts in mining. Uh, lots of great applications in shipbuilding for identifying areas that need repair and measuring the amount of material that you need to cut. There's so many diverse applications and that's one of the great things about what we do here at Objects Unlimited is we get to meet all these different customers and see all these different diverse uses of the technology that we support. What we've seen over the last several years is a lot more use of 3D scannings for renderings. And so we've got to work on music videos and on commercials and on television shows. In the past, maybe we would uh, design and produce a prop for a studio. Now, sometimes we are designing and producing virtual articles for use in film, TV, and production. And I got, I got to say, it's extremely exciting when we see a video or a TV show or a TV commercial that we know we've worked on. Uh, one of those amazing feelings when you see your work out there in the wild. There's several different ways to 3D scan and several methods of 3D scanning. Uh, one would be photogrammetry, where you take an awful lot of individual pictures. It's great for color and great for instantaneous capture, but the accuracy often is not there. A method that we use a lot is called structured light scanning, where we're projecting a pattern onto a part, taking a lot of photographs of the part itself and using the photographs and the pattern deflection to measure surfaces. A third method of scanning is using laser triangulation, where you put targeting dots on an object, scan it with lasers. Excellent method for extremely high accuracy, although we find the surface preparation time takes a little bit. And the fourth method of 3D scanning is using LiDAR, sending laser beams out to measure certain individual points. Excellent for large area scanning, very difficult for fine details. What we really like about the handheld scanners is that we can move around the object, we can dip, we can move. A lot of scanning involves body motion and arm motion to get into those areas that you can't necessarily see with a stationary scanner or a set of cameras. We tend to use structured light quite a lot because it works very well for our application where we're dealing with a lot of organic shapes and a lot of curves. But your choice of scanning technology really does depend on what you're doing with the scan and what you're trying to scan. In our experience, there's very few things that you can scan. It really depends on what type of equipment that you have. The size of the object that you scan can vary uh, from very small to very large. With this particular scanner here, the Artec Leo, we tend to focus on parts from about 15 centimeters up to about 15 meters in size. With LiDAR scanning, we tend to focus on things from 10 to 150 meters in size. Another scanner, the Artec Spider, we tend to focus on objects that are one centimeter to 15 centimeters in size. The Artec Micro Scanner will scan uh, very small objects, including jewelry. So really what you want to scan depends again on what the object is and what you're trying to do with it. It's not always necessary to get perfect accuracy or perfect dimension. One thing we certainly see a lot is people asking us to reverse engineer parts with really, really high accuracy when the part itself has surface defects. So if something's worn or if it's rusty, measuring something to a tenth of a micron or to one micron makes very little sense. And that's where sometimes gross geometry is necessary as an intern step to design. Scanning doesn't always solve all your problems. Scanning will give better information to an experienced designer to help them solve their design issue. It is 
not a magic wand where you wave it across and all of a sudden you have a perfectly designed product. We do it sometimes. Sometimes if we're scanning for 3D prints, say for a sculpture, we're able to scan and directly print that product. When it gets into more mechanical parts where reverse engineering is required, there's an intern, st intern step, which is design, and the scanner is a tool that will reduce that design time for you. So talking a little bit about workflow, um, there's several aspects to a workflow. Scanning, design, and printing are the three things that we tend to focus on. And I will say this, scanning is generally pretty easy if you have the right equipment and the right training, and printing is relatively easy if you have the right equipment and the right experience. The middle step of design is the challenge, and scanner is a tool. It helps you with design, but it does not do the job for you. And you need an expert uh, industrial designer, engineer, someone who knows the product that they're working on to take that scan data and turn it into something usable. One of the very common things we run into when we're outputting scan information is that we create polygonal files. Those are STL files made up of triangles, but when we import that data into a CAD system, a uh, CAD system is looking for NURBS services and features. So there has to be an interim step of translating that, and there's a lot of detail lost in that interim translation, and that's where a designer is really important. I can scan a hole, and I can measure it at 4.0125 millimeters or 4.165 millimeters, but the designer will know that that hole's gotta be four millimeters. And giving sometimes meta information or gross geometry can really save a lot of time in trying to deduce things, but it still is not a magic bullet. So if you're interested in 3D scanning, there's a couple things to consider. So number one is, what's your volume? If you need to do one or two scans, it makes way more sense to use a scanning service as we offer than to purchase a scanner for yourself. If you're gonna do a high volume of scanning, then purchasing a scanner may make sense. Now there's a lot of scanners on the market ranging in price from $200 to $200,000. I encourage you to do your research. Do your research carefully and see these things in action. I can't tell you how many times customers have purchased less costly scanners and been extremely disappointed with the ease of use the results and the software that runs the equipment. That's one thing we love about Artex scanners is the Artex Studio software, bar none, best scanning software I've ever seen. It is a, frankly, it's a pleasure to use this software and I can't believe um, how much it enhances my ability to scan. So when you're looking at purchasing scanning equipment, the number one thing is to talk to an expert. Have someone scan one of your parts and show you how it works. Not a sample part that's been scanned 300 times, not something that's easy, Something that's hard and expect that it might not go perfectly and that's what you want to see. When I'm demoing a scanner to somebody, I want them to see results that they will get after they do five scans, not the results that someone that's been scanning for 10 years can do. And it's really not that different once you have a little bit of practice and a little bit of training. The worst thing you can do is buy equipment from someone who doesn't know how to use it, doesn't know how to train you, then it sits in a box. If you're looking for a 3D scanning service, the best thing you can do is be prepared to tell us what do you need? What type of output file? What are the important features? What are the accuracies and tolerances of your part? And what are you doing with this part and with this scan? If we know that information, we can choose the right equipment, we can choose the right process, and we can give you the right output. If someone brings a part and says, please 3D scan this, of course we can do that. But like anything else, if you don't know what the use case is, the results are going to be uh, less good. Like 3D printing, 3D scanning can be a bit overwhelming when you first look at it. There's all kinds of different factors to consider. There's all kinds of different equipment out there. It's true, there's lots of factors to consider. That's why you should talk to experts like us. Talk to people that understand the equipment, talk to people that use the equipment, so we can walk you through all these different variables and all these different choices and make sure you get the right equipment for your application. At Optics Unloaded, we practice a very high standard of ethics. And so there are certainly some concerns when it comes to 3D scanning around intellectual property theft, or, uh, or people's identification information. You have to be very careful with these kind of things and it's always better to err on the side of caution. If it doesn't seem right, if it doesn't sound right, then we're not gonna do it. One of the reasons that people purchase from Optics Unlimited is our support. We answer the phone, that's number one. But number two is we understand what we sell and we have a high level of expertise. So you're not just getting a piece of equipment, you're getting the services around the equipment, you're getting access to every piece of equipment that we have in our own facility and to the talents of our team, which is Tremendous, significant, and will help you produce better parts, get better results, and be more efficient in your business.